Hey guys, it's Jess and welcome back to my channel. I hope you've all been having a very happy and productive week. And if you guys are new, then make sure to click the subscribe button down below so you can join in on the Jessica fam. Now, today's video is going to be another one of my routine videos because I know you guys love them, but I've done a bit of a twist for this one. So it's my nighttime routine for the times when you actually can't fall asleep or for the times when you really need a little bit of help falling asleep. So for all of you who can't sleep or have trouble sleeping, do not fear, study with Jess is here. Okay, now under today's video, I'm going to take you through a range of different rituals that you can add into your nighttime routine to help promote or facilitate a good night's sleep. So I hope you guys find today's video helpful and thumbs up if you do, but let's get straight into it and here are my tips. Alright, so the first is a cute little DIY which I found off Pinterest, which is creating your own sleep tray. So on your sleep tray, you might want to include a couple of different things. So for me personally, if I were to have a sleep tray at the foot of my bed or on my bedside table or even on my dresser, then this is what you would find. I would definitely have my favorite mug. I love lavender oil and also lavender perfume, so that's definitely going to be there. And then also an eye mask and some fuzzy or cozy socks. So anything that you want to include that's going to help you fall asleep. And that way, if you have a little bit of trouble, you can just go straight to your sleep tray and choose one of those things. Alright, the next thing is something I do pretty much every night unless it's really hot weather and seeing as it's autumn in Melbourne, it's a bit cooler so I have been doing it regularly which is to have a relaxing bath. Now I love to make my own bath salts but you can also buy some if you don't want to make your own and having a bath with Epsom salts or rose petals, lavender buds, I just find it so luxurious and it's just a really nice way to pamper yourself. Now, I'll also make sure to have a cup of tea every night. I just find it to be a really nice way to unwind and relax. And it's also a really good way just to be mindful and present. So make sure it's herbal tea though and not caffeinated because that'll keep you up for even longer. Now, something that Adam suffers from regularly is cold feet. And apparently having warm feet helps promote a good night's sleep. So invest in some cozy socks or even a onesie if you have one and it covers your feet. And I think that that's going to really make a difference because it's really hard to fall asleep when you're cold. And if you don't have any fuzzy socks, then you can even wear Ugg boots around the house or slippers. But just don't walk around barefoot before going to bed because it's going to drop your body temperature and it's a bit harder to fall asleep. Now the next thing I found off Pinterest, and I don't know how accurate it is, but it was talking about different foods that help promote sleep. So apparently making oats like porridge or oatmeal, that's going to help you sleep. Foods like kiwi as well and grapes. Now I really don't know how effective these foods are at helping you sleep and whether there actually is an entire food group that could promote a good night's sleep, but just thought I'd put it out there. Now, if you like reading, then I would encourage you to choose a book that's not going to make your imagination run wild and it's not going to be a real thought starter. So just be mindful about the kind of books that you choose, but I do find that making a little bit of time to read 10 or 20 pages in the evening is a really nice way to unwind, but it's probably not something I would recommend you do right before you go to sleep because I think it makes it a little bit harder to completely unwind. Speaking of books, the next tip is about avoiding... Sorry guys, technology. That's right, you probably shouldn't even be watching my videos if it's like 3 in the morning right now. But, okay, maybe you can finish watching this video, but then after that you have to go to bed, okay? The issue with technology is that the light from the screen actually inhibits your body's ability to produce your sleep hormone melatonin. So I never sleep with my phone in my room and it's certainly not the last thing you will find me doing before I go to bed. I typically try and get off of my phone about 30 to 60 minutes before I go to bed. It's really important that you guys try and do this and not rely on technology like your phone and apps and the internet as a way to unwind because it actually doesn't. While it might feel relaxing or like you're switching off, it's actually a barrier to having a good night's sleep. Now speaking of melatonin production, something I've been doing recently is buying a couple, just a couple different candles and I like to light one in the evenings. I also really like to burn incense as well. I have a little oil burner and there's a little tea light candle underneath. So you can actually dim the lights in the house and turn off most of the lights and then just have a little bit of light shining through from the candles and also that beautiful aroma that comes from the candles or burning incense and especially relying on things such as aromatherapy or burning some lavender oil that's definitely going to relax the senses and also relax the mind. Now for anyone who experiences serious troubles falling asleep I cannot stress how important this next tip is 
which is to establish a sleep schedule. So be really strict here on what time it is that you're going to go to bed and what time you aim to wake up in the morning. The more that you get into this routine, the easier it is to actually train your body to go to bed and also wake up. Another thing I've been doing in the evenings is some deep breathing. Now, one thing that I actually decided to combine my deep breathing with was putting my legs up the wall. So if you have your legs up the wall for around five or 10 minutes, and you can even just put a flat pillow or a blanket underneath your backside too, just makes it more comfy. Then a lot of blood drains from your feet and down through the body. And it also helps to stimulate your pituitary gland, which also helps you have a good night's sleep. And then deep breathing will turn on your parasympathetic nervous system, which is also gonna help you relax. Now, if you wanted some tips on how to do some deep breathing exercises or meditation, one of the apps that Adam's actually been using lately is Headspace, and he finds it really helpful. I personally learned all of my techniques from going to yoga and meditation classes, but the main one that I typically would do would be to inhale to the count of four, hold for two to four seconds, and then exhale to the count of six. And that's a really effective way to slow down the breath and slow down the mind. Now, the last tip I wanted to share with you is something I have been doing for the last few months, and I find it to be really beneficial. Now, I actually don't do this right before bed, but as long as you're doing it on a regular basis, it's just as effective, which is journaling. So if you keep a journal in your bedside table or by your bedside, then it's a really good way just to take all of the thoughts that are going on or running around in your mind and put it all into perspective and get it down on a page. So it's going to clear your mind, it's gonna allow you to fall asleep and not worry about so many things, but it also actually just helps you to process what you're feeling and what's going on for you right now as well. So if you guys don't already journal, I really recommend that you do, and you don't even have to invest in a journal, you can just use any notebook, any notepad, it really doesn't matter. The whole idea is you're just setting aside some time to write down your thoughts and clear your mind. So I hope you guys found today's video helpful. If you did, thumbs up to let me know. And also share a couple of different tips that you find really helpful for your nighttime routine and what sort of things help you to fall asleep more easily. I just feel like it's so beautiful when all of you guys share your tips and I see all of you commenting on one another's posts and it just makes me so happy because I feel like everyone just really cares about one another. So thank you guys so much. I love the Jessica fam. That's all for today's video. So until next week, have a very happy and productive week. Bye guys.